guys and welcome back to the farmhouse. I am Deanne from Hummingbird Acres and today I'm going to share with you guys kind of a little update on things that we got done over the weekend and to give you guys some tips on heading into fall and some of the things that you guys should be considering to do around your homestead. Let's jump right in. So our fall garden, um, our garden in general, is kind of dwindling down and winding down which is definitely giving us more time to travel and more time to go see family and friends. So this past weekend, Henley and I went to Pennsylvania to see my aunt and uncle and we got to shower my cousin with tons of love and their new baby. So we are super excited for the new baby to come. The baby shower was so much fun and it was great to just make some good food and spend some quality time with family. While Henley and I were in Pennsylvania spending time with family, Jamie got to take the boys to a birthday party. It was a roller skating birthday party and it was the first time the boys had ever been on roller skates. Um, Hunter did fabulous and great. Garrett was a little hesitant at first, but he did get out on there on the rink and skate around. I think the funniest thing was that Jamie was trying to take a video of Hunter roller skating and Hunter fell and Jamie couldn't stop in time and Jamie ended up falling over top of him. Both are fine, but it was just comical and a great part of that story and that adventure. Um, Marisol got to go spend some time with her bestie and just enjoy life. So as the fall comes and the garden starts to slow down and the homestead starts to slow down, now is a perfect time for you guys to start taking those little day trips and little adventures just to keep learning and keep exploring. Go visit another homestead. Go visit family that you haven't seen in a while. Um, if you are looking for other homesteads to visit, you know, you can always contact us. We always love having guests and visitors, but also t check out Hip Camp. They are great for camping families, and there are a lot of homesteaders that open up their homestead to others to go camping and come and see their homestead. It is also a great way to build those connections, which are really great to just learn more. And it is awesome to be around like-minded people. So make sure you check them out. We have a tradition of always going to the pumpkin patch with the neighbors. They have three girls. I taught all three of their girls when they were in kindergarten. Now they are in middle school and high school. And now our kids get to spend time with them. And it's just one of those great traditions where we just love to go and spend the day together. And the pumpkin patch is our go-to place in the fall. So this year we went to Why Worry Farm, which is not far from our house and got some pumpkins. I have to say that the pumpkins at Why Worry this year were really big, bigger than any of the previous years. They were really orange and they had amazing stems. We couldn't get over how big the stems were on some of these pumpkins. It was just awesome. Besides the pumpkin patch, they also have a corn maze, which the kids love running through, and they really upped their corn maze game this year. They had a few different paths that the kids could take, and the kids absolutely loved it. I think they went through like three or four times and took a different path each time. It was definitely one of the highlights of our day. Um, and then they also had some new baby goats that we got to see, as well as the chickens. The goats were dwarf Nigerians, um, and they milk their goats, and they had soap for sale as well. But it was great to see the goats and just see everybody's reaction to them. So that was a lot of fun. After visiting Why Worry Farms, we stopped at Hideaway Farms, which is just down the street. Um, I had seen the night before that they had mock orange bushes, and I had been looking for mock orange for a while now. My mother-in-law really wanted some, and I had found some online, but I just hadn't pulled the trigger to buy them, and I'm so glad that I didn't because they had them, they were local, and I love supporting local whenever we can. So we stopped in at Hideaway Farms. Hideaway Farms is where we buy all of our composted topsoil from. Jamie goes there all the time, but I had never been there. So it was great to go and meet Buddy and check out his farm. He is more of a nursery farm, so he grows a lot of things um, plant-related, but he propagates 
all of his plants. So he has like his mother tree and then he propagates everything from there, which you guys know is very near and dear to my heart. And he had a lot of native plants. So it was just a great experience and it was great to see exactly, to meet the guy that Jamie always talks about when we talk about this soil because we absolutely love this soil. Two years later, we are still pulling huge worms out of this soil. It just gets better with age. And I know Jamie is gonna wanna visit him many more times before we move because he wants his recipe for soil because it is that good. But I wanted to go for the plants and I have to say I was so excited and so over the moon when we got there. Not only did I find mock orange, I found the fig tree I had been looking for for a while and it sparked a, um, I guess a new wave of gardening for me. With the fall here, I really just kind of, you know, the garden is kind of coming to an end and I was just moving on to other projects. But what he made me realize is that you can still garden, especially if you have a house and you have a little bit of space and you have a large window. So when we got home, I walked our yard again and took inventory of some of the plants that I could propagate and I could propagate them through the winter. So I propagated our rhododendrons, I propagated some blueberry bushes, and I propagated another red dawn, a dawn redwood, sorry, I always get that mixed up. But I don't know if they will work, but I'm doing something, I'm trying something, and I'm experimenting. Now, I propagated these things and we don't necessarily need them for our homestead, but I could set up something exactly like what Buddy has. And it just, not only did it spark a new love for gardening for me, but it also gave me a new business idea. And I'm gonna share this business idea with you guys because it is something that you could also do. If you start extra seeds or you propagate things on your homestead, you could sell them and make a profit from them. I mean, he made over $100 from us in less than an hour, and we got to meet a great friend and connect with our neighbors and the fellow homesteading community. So don't let the fall and the winter stop you from your homesteading dreams. Make sure that you are getting creative, even if right now in the fall you're just taking cuttings of some of your favorite plants, propagating them. Maybe you don't need them, but down the road in maybe the spring or even maybe the end of summer, those plants will be big enough that you could sell them and make a little bit of profit. My plan is to, I propagated the rhododendrons, the dawn redwood, and the blueberry bushes, and then come spring, we have tons of, not tons of, we have hydrangeas in the front of our house, and you guys know I propagated those in the summer. I'll leave a link to that video below, but I'm gonna propagate even more because hydrangeas are loved by just about anyone, and if I do that, then I could sell them. He also suggested that I propagate our butterfly bush, which I thought was a great idea because it is a pollinator plant. And he also suggested that I go and start collecting seeds from our black-eyed Susans and our coneflowers so that I can winter sow those and then either have those plants for us, but then also sell them as well. So I went and cut some of those. Super excited about winter sowing them. I'm gonna do a whole video on that. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss that video. Overall, I am so glad we visited Hideaway Farms. It really sparked a new love for gardening for me and gave me some new ideas that I can carry into fall and winter and not let my love of gardening kind of get pushed down. When we, all, when we got back from Hideaway Farms, I also, with the kids' help, we planted another 60 acorns. We had collected acorns when we were at the Shenandoah, and I had planted about 40 of them when we got back, but we had so many more, and with this new spark of growing things and selling them, I decided that why not plant some more? We had the soil, we had the pots, might as well plant some more and see what we got. So the kids helped me fill up buckets, and we planted about 10 acorns in each bucket. Some of the acorns had already sprouted, which was great, so we made sure that we planted those first, but another way to make money on your homestead, and it's a fun activity that you can do with your kids, and you're also growing something. After we did all of our gardening, my godmother and godfather came over, 
and they had a great activity for the kids to do, painting activity that was all about pumpkins and fall. Hey, did you have fun painting your pumpkin? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. What color did you paint it? Um, red and blue. How about orange and green? No. No. The kids had so much fun painting their pumpkins, and then we put little tea lights in them at night so that they would glow. So just another fun fall project. My tip for you guys going into fall and going into winter is don't let your love of homesteading die. Find new and creative ways to grow your homestead, even when the weather might not be so nice outside. Make sure you head on over to our website, hummingbird-acres.com. I have tons of resources there for you on things that you can do in the fall and in the winter to grow your homestead. We ended our weekend with Jamie and the kids cutting the grass for the very last time this season. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me at the farmhouse today. I hope you guys gained some, a little bit of inspiration for your own homestead. If you have some big homesteading dreams, then you need our Homestead Goal Planner. I have linked it below for you. It is gonna walk you through how to dream big, how to break those dreams down into goals, how to break those goals into projects and action steps so that you can accomplish them and you can live your dream life on your dream homestead. Make sure you check it out. The link is below for you. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and I will talk to you soon.